in front of me you can see one of the areas of grass which we are going to be converting uh, into a food producing area in the long run and in the short run and in this video I'll show you a bit about this area and um, share some of the ideas and plans we have um, for how we can grow some food here it's about 15 meters along that side and maybe 10 towards that side we are now mid-november and down here in New Zealand which means we're in the full swing of spring and um, so in the middle of spring and it's quite warm today 25 degrees Celsius and um, the Sun is definitely past its peak what that means for this area is that for a large part of the day this whole area will be covered in shade that's partly due to this beautiful golden ash which kind of functions as a uh, canopy canopy species tree here um, so that's something we really have to consider and also just experiment with because now it's towards the end of the afternoon and only now is the sun kind of coming on here and we'll have some sun quite some time because it sets on that side which is the west side and it comes up on the east side and that's pretty much facing north-ish also important to note is there's a very gentle slope that goes down into the creek in the far end so it's um, yeah the slope is something we want to uh, consider so the plan is since we're in, in, in spring already um, we're not gonna till and do some heavy lifting and all kinds of things we basically have some pumpkin seedlings which do not have a spot yet anywhere in the garden because most of the conventional or areas that we reserved for growing some of the annual crops have been filled all the spaces have been filled and um, so what we're going to try is we're going to uh, in the edge part here in this area uh, dig or kind of shovel a very gentle swale so that if any water comes or a heavy rainfall comes especially in the summertime when it's very dry here we hope to catch it and then feed it to the plants it's not that much um, seedlings but we'll give it a try and in the meantime we'll wait for another load hopefully of wood chips which we can dump in the far end to start suppressing the grass um, in during the season yeah, so in the winter we can think about growing some, some either some fruit trees or some other perennial plants or think about um, doing another annual cycle of production or uh, maybe a combination of both. Uh, some other important characters, some players in this piece is this um, beautiful rhododendron which has been around here for a while and then a quite beautiful ivy, Hemixhedra, um, variegated and a regular vari um, variation, yeah. variety, sorry. And again, the uh, uh, golden ash. All right, so I just did some simple, simple shovel work um, with a flat, flat spade, kind of shoveled a bit flipped it on the other side and in no way does this follow the rule books for making a swale and you know is it perfect or whatnot all I'm hoping that it will happen is some of the rainfall will be caught and flow down and then we'll feed into this uh, catchment uh, mini catchment and soak uh, the pumpkins that are growing here uh, there's some compost that we have and I'll dig small um, planting holes for each of them, add some compost um, and then spread them along the whole edge so that we have a nice edge and then see um, if they uh, like it here or not. Alright, so this is them. There they are in the soil. Sad to admit that I broke one of the stems off of these beautiful babies. So we'll see. But we'll have to see how all of them do. I'll give them a deep soak. 
water. And they had a deep, deep soak when they were still in the pots. So the root system should be full of luscious water on this nice warm day actually. So I wouldn't mind a bit of water myself after this. So um, what I'll do after this is I'll cover them. Cover them with a bit, uh, pieces, pieces of plastic. And I'm gonna specifically do that with these young ones to get them past their um, seedling stage because these are the, the two seed leaves and what I want to do is make sure they get to this stage and have um, a few leaves of their own but I'll cover all of them just because they're in a exposed spot all right so here they are done protected watered and ready to grow hopefully so, is this an ideal situation? Not at all. Um, there's probably many different other scenarios I can think of that would have been uh, an easier or better or more preferred starting position to slowly convert this uh, piece of grass into a, a food, food producing area. Um, but it is what it is. And um, this is um, how we're gonna work it because um, we had some of the seedlings left over. Maybe down the line, if we, um, if more seedlings uh, or other plants come to us, then we'll plant them in there, or we could probably even get a second row going with another mini swale. Um, but one of the benefits of starting anyways, and you know, you could buy these plants, these, these seedlings were gifted to us, so that we definitely wanted to use those. Um, uh, but you could buy plants or you could still grow from seed in, in the middle of spring or you know you could do whatever the, i think the the major benefit from starting anyways even though it felt like oh we're in in the middle of spring going towards summer maybe we're too late and you know or all kinds of other thoughts you might have is that um well first of all hopefully at the end of the season we'll have some beautiful pumpkins and um, if not that's fine because once you start producing or growing food or plants in general even that means you become more in tune and more and you pay more attention to the uh, to the area that you're um, that you planted so it'll hopefully as i said not only give us pumpkins but more importantly it'll draw me to come out here every once in a while and to observe and to see what happens you know the pumpkins they love sun so will they manage with only a few hours of direct sunlight at the end of the day coming from that direction um you know will they handle the winds um how's the shade in this under this beautiful uh, ash tree you know all kinds of factors um, maybe i'll come out with the rain sometime and see if if the, you know, the minuscule minuscule swale i don't know if that would exist but we'll take it uh if it works in the rain time and with with some rain um so yeah so basically in the end i hope it draws me out here more often to observe and see what happens and then once we get some more wood chips maybe we'll cover it with more wood chips or uh, we can improvise as we go but the main thing is we'll start observing and watching and learning and slowly but surely this within an undefined amount undefined <laughs> Sorry. This area hopefully will be within an undefined amount of time. No more grass and all edibles. Thank you for watching.